this is my vintage 1993 Nissan Sentra, and it really has all the premium features you might expect in a car of its time, such as the sick dual cup holders, uh, these weird automatic seatbelts, and the air conditioner even still works, although it is stuck in manual mode. And I sort of like cars of this vintage, because the engine compartments are a little less full than modern cars. Even with this amazing twin-cam, four-cylinder engine stuffed in here, you can still see clean through to the ground, which is really handy if you happen to drop a wrench into the engine compartment, because it'll just fall straight through. Obviously, I've added a lot of sweet mods to this car, like a top-of-the-line digital radio, a custom fire suppression system, even a backup camera, and lots of auxiliary instrumentation. And all these gauges aren't just for show. Uh, mature cars like this are a little prone to having issues, and these instruments can give me an early indication that something is going wrong. The latest addition to these gauges is something known as a pitot tube. And a pitot tube might look more at home on an airplane, where it uses the dynamic pressure of the flowing air to determine air speed. And since cars generally have wheels, they can often determine ground speed by measuring how fast the wheels are turning. But I've been having some issues with the speedometer in the Sentra, so I'm hoping that this pitot tube could act as a useful backup in a pinch. Mounting the differential pressure gauge required some minor modifications to my gauge cluster, but once the pressure gauge was secured in the mount, all that was left to do was to connect some tubing. The pitot has two ports. The first is for the main opening of the tube, which faces into the airstream, while the second port is connected to an array of little holes on the side of the pitot tube, which measures the ambient static pressure. These ports have to be connected to the differential pressure gauge back in the cabin of the car. This gauge similarly has two ports, one for the positive pressure and one for the negative pressure. These are plumbed to the main tube and ambient tube respectfully. And with everything connected, it was time to do some testing. Cursory Google search, I knew that I needed to know the density of the air in order to determine the airspeed from the pitot tube. And since locally the elevation is around a thousand feet, I could do some quick maths to correlate the reading on the pressure gauge to an approximate airspeed. You will note that I had to do a lot of conversions to go from inches of water, which is tragically what the gauge reads, to SI units, which is where the real math was done, and then back to miles per hour, which is what all the roadsides read in. And while it definitely was not perfect, the pitot tube did appear to correlate with the speedometer to within around 3 to 5 miles per hour. So I think that this could be a passable backup if the speedometer ever tried to fail completely. And in the meantime, maybe this will be a good excuse for speeding. After all, I could always claim that my pitot tube said that I was going the legal airspeed. Thanks for watching.